There are two things that I really, really love. I love Home Labs and I love NAS devices. NAS devices being network attached storages. These devices that have a whole bunch of disks and a home lab being a space where I can create a lab, sort of like a science lab. You know, if you think about a science lab, they're going in and experimenting, they're going and building things, they're going and testing things like that, but for techs, right? A techie person can go in and buy themselves some little computers, set them up as servers. They could go and set up a switch, play around with different firewall technologies, learning how to control things, set up their own VPN, learn about pen testing. But then you've got to think about where are you going to store all of this stuff? You need to store it somewhere. You're going to build potentially virtual machines. You're going to house a lot of data. Maybe you want to have a space where you can build a file server and then store all that data somewhere that every computer and maybe your smart devices, your Apple TVs could actually access all of this data. Be pretty awesome. And the solution for that is potentially getting a NAS. I'm going to show you a little bit about a NAS that I've got and why I think of the best investment that you can make for every, every single home lab. And let me tell you about this device. This is the one network device to rule them all. It's a Teltonica RUTX 50. The features on this router are amazing. 5G built in, not one SIM, but two SIMs. The primary one goes down, you've got a second one. Got your antennas in the back, so you can even boost that signal even more. Built in Wi-Fi technology, again, with a couple of external antennas antennas, built-in firewall for added security, you've got VPN, DNS, you've got DHCP, you've got load balancing. This thing is that device that every techie needs to get. So if you've got your own home lab, you've got your own network that you need to manage, one of these needs to be part of your arsenal. I've got the link in the video description. So one of the nice things about a home lab is that I can build really anything that I want. Test it, play with it, destroy it, make mistakes on it, and then learn from that. There's probably two main reasons why somebody may want a home lab at home. The first is they work in tech or they're wanting to get into tech. So they build a space where they can actually play around with technology. They can play around with the latest and greatest versions of Windows, of Linux. They can go and code. They can create some scripts themselves. They can maybe run a website. They could learn about Active Directory. They can learn about all of these really cool technologies. So then they can go to work and say, hey, look at all the stuff that I know. The second is maybe because you just want to be a bit of a tech geek at home. And that's great. I love that as well. Is at home, I've got a lot of stuff. I've got all of my personal documents, I've got my photos, my videos that I've taken when I've gone on holidays, family, friends stuff. I wanna store that in a central single spot. I wanna be able to manage it quite easily. Maybe my devices, I've got a lot of smart devices out on my network, smart home stuff, got television. I wanna be able to dish out IP addresses and manage my IP addresses. I wanna be able to have authentication where people can log in. Maybe I wanna share accounts, I wanna share data. So it's nice to have a space that yes, could be used for learning, but it's actually really, really good to just benefit other things in your home. For all of this, you need to be able to store the data somewhere. You need to store it somewhere. I mean, you could store all this data on the computers themselves. You could, you've got built-in hard drives. You can store them on USB drives. You can store some stuff in the cloud if you really wanted to. But there's all these risks, I think, associated with some of that stuff. Imagine if you've got a USB hard drive containing all of your data, and then that hard drive dies. It happens more than you can imagine. Somebody's stored all of their photos on this one disk and they've lost it all. But you wanna probably centrally manage all of this sort of stuff. You don't wanna just have a server that you build, install some virtualization technology onto it. Maybe you're testing Citrix. You install Zen server. You now need to go and build some VMs. You wanna build some new Linux VMs. You can store them on that server, but then if that server dies, you're in a bit of trouble. What if you need to upgrade that server to something new and you wanna move those VMs over? So this is why I love a NAS, a network attached storage. And there's a lot of brands of NASs out there. I mean, I've just shown you my Synology one. I love my Synology NAS, but there's also QNAP, there's TerraMaster, there's other NASs that are out there that do very, very similar things. I mean, some are better than others. Some have got some really, really great app stores that allow you to go and actually configure your NAS. More than just storage, you can actually go and build a website on it. You could set up a VPN directly on your NAS. They have a lot of extra purposes rather than just storing data. But what this gives you is it gives you the option to install multiple disks inside of it. And these things can come in a myriad of disk configurations. They can come in two, 
in four, in eight, 16, and bigger. The benefit of something like this is you can actually set up a NAS to have multiple levels of redundancy or failover. So what this means is you've got all of your disks. You may have four disks inside of your NAS, but they will be set up with RAID groups, with actual failover built in with spare disks. So that if one disk fails, you don't actually lose the NAS altogether. You don't lose the data on there. So you can go and configure this NAS with some really big disks as well. Think about your USB hard drive. Maybe you buy a USB hard drive that's an eight terabyte drive. Great, you're then gonna run out of space and what are you gonna do? You're in a bit of trouble. With a NAS, you could buy four eight terabyte hard drives. Yes, it's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but now you've got four eight terabyte hard drives in there and some of these NASs, you can easily expand them as well. If I'm running out of space, as long as it's configured in a specific way, you could take out a disc that's eight terabytes and then stick in a 10 terabyte one and then it'll go rebuild the RAID and then you've all of a sudden got some extra storage. These units are also network attached. So on the back of them, you've got a network port. Some of them have got two ports, some of them have got four ports. Because they're a little bit more corporate-y, you can have multiple ports and they run into your network switches. And now that device is available on the network. Any of the devices in your home environment, in your office environment even, can now access that NAS. Now the NAS can be configured with relevant shares, with SMB shares, NFS shares, whatever the operating system is that you're running, whether that be Apple, whether that be Microsoft, whether that be Linux, you can actually set up multiple types of folders and shares. And the nice thing is it has full compatibility with a lot of the modern virtualization platforms. So if you're gonna be running VMware, if you're gonna be running Citrix or any of these other guys, you can actually get a VMware environment, for example, to talk directly to the NAS. And then you can form a little connection between the two. And then you can build virtual machines and the storage is on the NAS now. Makes it so easy. So I could have one of my little computers here. I've got my little Zimmer board. I love this thing. And I could have that running VMware's ESXi, but the physical VMs, the VMs themselves that I'm building, the virtual machines that I'm building are not stored there. They're stored on my NAS. So then later on, when I wanna go and buy myself a really, really big server, I don't have to go and move the data. I don't have to move a VM from this smaller computer to the bigger computer. I just point my bigger server to the NAS and now that server can communicate with the NAS and now I can access all of the virtual machines on there and then start running my VMs that way. Really cool. The nice thing about a NAS of course, is that it also does have an app store so I can go and download applications, I can actually run things directly on that. So it's almost like a computer with a whole bunch of disks. This is why I love NAS devices. And I think no home lab is complete without one. It's almost one of those essential things. So yes, they can cost a little bit to get one, different types, different models. Down below, I've actually got the link to my NAS. Also would love it if you like tech to subscribe to this channel, release videos every single week. We will see you on the next one.